almost anything, right? That you're not constrained by a government or a religion or anything that keeps you in a place that can find you. And happiness to me is not about money, right? It's about the satisfaction that you are doing something larger with your life and feeling very confident in the fact that you are leaving a mark in the world, you know? And we've gone all over the world and I've seen very, very happy people and yet they don't have a lot, you know? So I don't think it's defined by, by money. If you decide you want to make something, I think in this country, there is a pathway to do that. There is a path if you really surround yourself with the right people and don't keep in your head that you can't do it. If you think you can, I believe you can. But I found that these older, successful people, they want to give back. They want to tell their story. But a lot of people, when they're young, they think, oh, they don't want to talk to me. They're too big. They're too important, they're too busy, right? And it could be farther than the truth. If you just ask, you never know. I'd love to just pick your brain. I think over time, asking became much easier, right? And an example is when I first drove out to California, I literally found myself on a bench over the Pacific Ocean in Corona Del Mar, beautiful homes, beautiful cars, people, everything you could ever imagine. And I thought, I want this life, you know? Like, the, you know, I and grew up pretty hard and I'm thinking, wow, like how do you get this? And there's a man in the yard and he's trimming his rose bushes. And I walked up to him and I just said, what did it take to get this house? You know, I said, I'd love to have something like this. I think I can do it. What is it? What did you do? And that's when he politely told me he was the gardener and he was not the owner. But he said, I thought the man, he says, I think the man's in real estate. So I want to get into real estate, right? I had no clue, but I just thought if, if real estate can get you here, I want to get into real estate. And But the point to that story more is just asking, right? Just going up to people and saying, what do you do? How'd you get this? And then is that something I'd be interested in, you know? And I've asked a million questions, by the way, and I've had people turn me down on answers or had people give me answers that I wasn't interested in or whatever, right? But But it's just you slowly start to build your own idea of what you want. And what you gotta do is be good at being you, right? You don't have to be somebody else. And your transparency or your authenticity, should I say, it will reveal itself and then people will come into you if you are who you really are, right? If you're a good person, you have morals, you have integrity, all those things that we really need. If you believe in karma and you believe the fact that good things happen to good people, then you will, if you are, again, if you're out there and open, I think you'll attract people. And when you attract the right people, right, then, you know, you can go faster. You can do the things that you're really interested in doing. You have to believe, I, if I just convince myself that if I keep thinking this way, it will happen. Because by the way, the first few times you might get thrown back on your butt and go, okay, it didn't work for me. No, you have to, you have to be, you, know, you have to keep doing it. Why do I spend energy on things I cannot control? I had a failed fourth grade. Why am I going to be upset about it? I think about this after the fact and realize don't spend energy on things you can't control. So as my life got, as I moved along, I started wasting less energy on things like that. And then realizing, find the silver lining. What good came out of this issue? You know, and I've had a lot of them, right? So, okay, so I can't change the things that I could probably cry over, so what, what lesson did I learn? You know, and then, and now my life in the last 15 years, 20 years, has been really focused on all the, the learnings. Surround themselves with people inferior, and then your whole company or division or whatever you're in fails, right? Versus people that have enough confidence to say, wow, you can fill in the, the blind spot I don't have or my weakness and you fill it all in and your whole company rises or whatever you're doing, your whole project rises because all of you combine to make this uber, you know, quick, fast, smart um, project go, right? And so that became pretty evident to me because I didn't have a lot of the skills that why don't I let those people do it? You know, why don't I bring in more people and the more talent I brought in, the quicker we went you know, and the less time we wasted. And I went, all right, I think I'm onto something here, you know? And then to admit it, hey, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. You know, I'm the chairman of my company. 
I hate running the meetings. I don't, I don't <laughs> like being the one that has to tell people what to do. I'm not good at that. I have, I like the, the vision, right? I like, I got an idea, let's march up this hill. That's fun to me. But the details, let's let people that like to do that better than I do do it. Life is not easy. That when you do get into a hole, it's not about laying there and, and feeling like the victim. It's about getting up and pulling yourself up out of the hole and figuring it out. Who are we when everything is taken away from? And in 2007 and eight, when everything was taken away, in that moment, I was in the darkest hole, you know, and looking around and thinking the whole community and industry is looking at me, who am I now? I kind of like that feeling because that's the real you. It's when, when you are not built up on the fakeness of money and people kissing, and all those things. Who are you as just a human being? And so that moment when I was at my darkest in 2007 and eight, literally, it's a, it's a longer story than we have right now, but I stood up and said, let's go. And literally went in front of everybody's face, and never hid and said, how are we gonna get ourselves out of this? The fear and having that devil on your, you know, give up, give up, just, you can throw this, you can, you know, they, they won't ever have to make the show. All those kind of things, we all face that in our lives. It's just not with millions of people watching, right? It's just, we, I don't, this job wasn't what I thought it would be. Maybe, but the job over across the street's better. The career over there is better. And people hop because they don't stick to it. They don't go through the pain. They don't go through the fear. And then they end up in a cycle that goes over and over and over again, right? And the ones that are successful, and I don't just, again, mean financial, but the successful and fulfilled, they fight through the pain, they, they stay later, they work through it, they sacrifice, and then they feel proud because it works. It will work when you do the right thing and you struggle and you don't give up. I, all of the hard things that happened in my life, I'm very grateful for because it did lead me to a place where now it doesn't seem to be that hard. And so I happen to have a podcast called Grit Happens, right? And it's very, but it's about that grit and it's about the determination, not giving up, feeling um, that you're not alone. And what you touch on, I, I love, that's the best part of why I like to tell my story. I don't like to lead with success. I like to lead with vulnerability. You know, literally when I was a kid, I remember uh, my sister ran into the laundry room in our, because they would, like five times they caught the laundry room on fire. Whoa! And one time my sister had run in there, she was like three, and I was out there and everyone was like, the fire was coming out of the building, right? And no one was doing anything about it. And I ran in there and crawled on the floor and found her and dragged her out. Whoa. And it would be like, why didn't anybody else do that? Like I did, I remember always for some weird reason running against the crowd. I don't know why, right? But I would just go the opposite way, you know? My dog ate the little, you know, electric cord and it was flopping around and everyone ran. They were afraid and I, I ran over there and I pulled it out of the wall, right? Like I'm going, why doesn't anyone else? They always run away. And I, I don't know why, but then I began to like the fact that when people ran away, I'd run the other way. And so then business that would happen and it became very clear to me when everyone dove out the window, I thought, look at all of this opportunity. Look at all this talent. Nobody's gobbling up this talent. I could never get these people in a normal world. 